Shalom, everybody. We are continuing with where we left off in Kutalachot, section or Chaim, the laws of Birkat Hoda, the laws of giving thanks, the blessing of thanksgiving, Birkat Romel, discourse number six, which again remembers based on the Kutimran lesson 24. We're holding in the middle of paragraph 23, where Avnosin is dissecting this verse from the end of the Chumash, before Marshal Benu's passing, right after he blessed all the 12 tribes, at this point, he is now giving a summary of life and the goal of life. That's his, like, his final words, part of the beginning of his final words, right? So the verse is in Dvarim, chapter 33, verse 26. And we said earlier, if you remember, that the verse is divided in three sections. Section one, Ein Ka'el Yeshurun. There is no God like the God, your God, Kel, Jewish people were called Yeshurun. And what's his greatness? Rochev Shamayim, the one, this is as we've also explained it in the last class. Rochev Shamayim Be'ezrecha, the one who rides over all the heavens. We call all the heavens, there's seven heavens if you want to call them. Everything in this universe, they're all called heavens. And Hashem is above all that, he's Rochev Shamayim. And he comes to your assistance. As lofty as he is, he's above everything else, and yet he's willing to come to your assistance. And the third part of the verse, of Ga'avato Shechakim. And in Hashem's greatness, his Ga'ava, his Ge'onut, his, his, his haughtiness, because on Hashem we can say that he's haughty, because it's his greatness. He is over the Shechakim also. He dwells over the Shechakim. What is Shachak? Okay, then the Rav Nosa now is going to explain the third part of this verse. We explained until now the first two. And now Rav Nosa will go into details of the third section of this verse. What does it mean, Uv Ga'avato? And in His Holiness, Hashem rides over the Shechakim, this type of heaven which is called Shachak. Let's see why it's called Shachak, what the rabbis teach, and how Rav Nosa interprets this based on Lesson 24. So he says like this, Rav Nosa, V'zeh Uv Ga'avato Shechakim. This is the meaning of that in Hashem's haughtiness, He rides over the Shechakim. Why is this heaven, this firmament called Shachak? Shesham Shochakin Man Latzadikim. The Gemara says in Chagiga, page 12b, that this level of heaven is called Shachak because it is there that Hashem is Shochak. The word Shachak means to grind. Hashem grinds and distributes mana, this heavenly food called mana, to the tzaddikim, which becomes mazon la tzaddikim, okay? Mana tzaddikim, this is the food of the tzaddikim. To understand what's going on, we have to see the Gemara. The Gemara in Chagiga, page 12, lists, Reish Lakish says the following, there are seven levels of heaven. Before him, Rabbi Yudha says, Rabbi Yudha says there's two Riki, I'm going to read the Gemara inside, Amar Rav Yehuda, Shnei Reki Inhen. Rav Yehuda says, there are two types of heavens. In total, there's seven. Rav Yehuda says, there's really two. Two is the one that's revealed to us. That's one Reki, the one that we see when we look up to heaven. And there's the second one called Shmei HaShemayim, the heaven of heavens, which is beyond what we see. And that's the second one. Reish Lakish is basically opening up what Rav Yehuda says. Okay, Reish Lakish says, no, there's really seven. The two that Rabbi just said is seven plus one, the one find that's revealed to us. What's beyond those, the second group, which is called heaven of heavens, breaks into seven categories, right? He said that there are Beluhen. First one is called Vilon, like a drape, a drape. Rakia, the second firmament is called itself firmament, Rakia, because they're called seven Rekiim. So the second one, it's called the name, the general name called Rakia. Shechakim is number three, Zvul four, Maon five, Machon six, and Aravot seven. And the Gemara goes on to explain each one. Vilon is like not noticeable. It's you see the light, the sun rise and the sun set. What we see is called Vilon. Rakia is where all the constellations and the sun and the moon are located. That whole section which we see, the planets and the stars, what we see, that whole section is called Rakia. Shechakim is really way beyond that. Okay, it's beyond that stage. And it's called Shachak. Shachak is already supernatural. In other words, the constellations, 
that guide this world, the sun and the moon and the planets and the stars, they work together with the nature, the natural occurrences of this world. That's Rakia. Shachak is already a begin stage which is supernatural. Like the manna was supernatural food, so too the tzaddikim are nurtured from the supernatural food. Meaning, you have people existing in this world that they're not governed by the laws of nature. For example, laws of nature is like by the going, you wake up in the morning, you go to work, and you come home at night, you go to sleep, tomorrow you work again, and at the end of the month you get your paycheck, and you live based on that money you bring in. Mana su support from mana support, that's a nice name for an organization, mana support is where a person is not governed by daily laws and, and daily rituals and customs of society for natural survival and existence. It's supernatural, that's why it's called mana. Uh, the commentaries, they say something amazing, that there are, in that level, shachak, uh, an, just an analogy of what's out there spiritually, is they have asteroids, giant asteroids, that never have touched this earth, and yet they crash into one another, and from the crashing particles descend into the rakia, the section of the rakia, so that when the, na the natural occurrence of rain takes place, with this condensation going up and then making clouds, you have particles of these meteors that fall into the clouds, and when there's a production of rain, they have like a very tiny mixture, like a millionth or whatever, of particles of the, the sparks from the meteors that fell down, okay? So that the rainwater is not just regular water that came from the sea, and condensation became a cloud, and then that's it, it falls on the crops and everything, and that's it. There's a special, a special additional quality from way above, from these asteroids, if you want to say, they're going into the rain. So too, the idea of the spiritual brach of the rain, like the Gemara says that rain only falls in the merit of the tzaddikim, because rain has a special quality, it's outside of this atmosphere. So that's mana also. Mana is a quality of nourishment that's outside of this atmosphere, and that's the realm called shachak, because Hashem grinds the mana, because money comes in a bigger format and it's ground and it comes to be distributed properly in manageable portions. But for who? Not for everybody. For tzaddikim. Specifically tzaddikim, they merit being nursed from a supernatural force. That's why they're not governed by the laws of work and, and toil like the rest of society and mankind where no pain, no gain, you have to work in order to survive. These tzaddikim live in a different ballgame. They run on a different level of divine providence on a super high supernatural, above nature level, okay? So look what Nosen says. This is what Shachak, this is how the Gemara interprets Shachak. It's called Shachak. Again, the Gemara says there, like Reish Lakish is saying this, it's called Shachak because Hashem grinds. Here's the word of the Gemara. Shachakim shebo rechaim omdot v'tochanot man l'tzadikim l'atid lavo that in this level, there is a type of a mill that stands and grinds man for tzaddikim for the future world. So they explain future world also means present because the tzaddikim are living what's called future world mode where they're not governed by the laws and statutes of society, etc. They're living already in the world to come. Rav Nosen said something similar about himself. He said about himself, Rav Nosen, my Mashiach has already come. He's already living in Mashiach mode, Rav Nosen. Even though he lived 200 years ago, he wasn't under the go govern of of of, of uh, of, of uh, society's wealth and poverty situation is totally from Ashgach Pratit. Okay, so with all that said, let's see now what Rav Nosin is saying. Okay, so he says like this. In this third level, really, it's called Shochakim because that is where Tzadikim, Mana, the supernatural spiritual food called Man, is grounded, is grinded, and and brought out the smaller proportions and portions and morsels for the tzaddikim. Okay? Man bechinat hadat. Man stands for da'at. This is known. Mana, the food of the mana, the, which the, the Jews in the desert ate, is called da'at. It, it says in the Gemara that only someone who has da'at could eat from the mana. That's why they were called dor de'a, the generation of knowledge, because they ate mana. It's like A leads to B, B leads to A. That because, because of uh, their mana, the supernatural ability of having a nourishment way above, they had what's called da'at, okay? So Rav Nosen's interpreting, we say that man 
is grounded for tzaddikim, and what does that mean? What is a supernatural food and nourishment? It just, it just means physically that they're, they're alive, they're governed on different grounds. It's more than that. The nourishment is coming from a super, supernatural level. So what does nourishment do to a body? Your brain functions based on the nutrients that you have in your body. So if now you're being nurtured, nourished by a spiritual uh, um, energy, automatically the brain is affected by that and it's more spiritual. In our context, that true that, which is only which is called knowledge of Hashem, is due to the mana. The mana causes this type of dot. Okay? So that's what he says here. Man bechinata dot kamuva. As is brought down, okay? There's something which is known that man and dot are synonymous. So it's as if the Gemara is saying that Hashem grinds dot. It's fitting in so amazingly to grind the infinite light awareness, dot of the infinite light, which is too big, to grind it to proportions and portions which are morsels which are usable by the tzaddikim, that's called that. Unbelievable. That's why it's being grounded. Because the mana is taking everything from above it, all the way up to the infinite light, which is above the seventh heaven, the highest rakia, which is the border between us and Hashem. The infinite light is called the seventh heaven. And above each world, we're going to see now, each of these seven rakia that Reish Lakish lists, it's not like one goes into the other and that's it. It's not like you're driving between countries in Europe and you can just drive right through Switzerland and Germany and Belgium. At least there was a time it was like that. Today, I guess, there's border patrols in every country. But there was a time you can go through one country to the next, no problem, from France into Germany into Italy. That's the European, you know, Tour de France, whatever you do, a tour. You go around for one. It's not like that. Every level, every country, every aspect, you have to have a rakia in between. That's what he said earlier of no sin in this, in this section, that you have a, a wall. Before you're ready to go to the next level, you have to be bounced back. The bouncing back creates vessels, kalim, nine vessels, nine chambers, to be able to perceive what's beyond. Because there's a big rule in Hasidut and in Kabbalah in general, any level above your level right now, even though by the tzaddikim, they've already internalized those levels. However, because for you, it's still beyond your reach. For you, those levels are called Ein Sof, the infinite light. Even though it's being borrowed, the term infinite light is being borrowed. It's not the actual infinite light, which is way above everybody's levels. Still, in your perspective, in relationship to you, it's called Ein Sof, the infinite light. To perceive it, you have to have a bounce back. And then you create the nine vessels. The vessels you create allow you to perceive in touching and not touching the infinite light until you go up more, you're able to advance, and that's internalized. And then something beyond, another rakia, you face another bar barrier for the, what's beyond. The ultimate, ultimate is the actual infinite light level, which only the biggest tzaddikim can reach that level. And then they have that final, final wall, the rakia, we spoke shamayim, the middle part of this verse. Rav said is referring to that level. That the Hashem, who's Rochev Shamayim, and the word Shamayim includes all these seven heavens that the Gemara Rish Lakish has list, listed, calling them Rakiat, seven Rakiin. They're all included in the word Shamayim. Okay? So Rochev Shamayim, the one who's above, riding over all the heavens, he comes to help you at every junction and challenge that you're going through in your life. Every level that you're going through on the lower Rakiin, in your level, in your life, in your challenges, Hashem comes to help you in that challenge. He's there to help you, to not to not give up and not to fall in, just to be strong, okay? So going back, Rav Nosson says like this, okay? Like we said, is brought, as is brought down in many books, Rabbi Nachman himself brings this down also in the Kutir Maran, that's in 56, the whole idea of the connection between mana and the dat, okay? So now in the upper heavens, which are way above this earth, okay, which are called Shechakim, Hashem grinds the manna at those levels, which means Bechinat Mazon the Tzadikim, that's the food of the Tzadikim, which is like we just said, Rabbi Nosson explained what he said earlier, Shehu Hadat Ha'elyon, Sheish Bokol Ta'amim. This is the Tzadikim tasting what's called the upper Da'at, which is a taste of the infinite light. And because it's the root of everything else, it has all the tastes in the world, just like the physical manna that they ate in the desert. Whatever they thought, the taste of the food turned to that. 
so too when the tzaddikim reach this spiritual mana, this da'at, they have the taste of every area of the Torah, and every area of life is opened up to them. All the da'at is opened up to the tzaddikim, and they see anything they want. They have access to any level of da'at, any piece of awareness that they want to connect to when they have that mana coming down to them, they have access to. Unbelievable. That's da'at avion. That's the mana, okay? Phenomenal, Rav Lusen saying here. Just like the mana had all the tastes that they want to taste, so too the tzaddikim, the nurse of tzaddikim, have access to this da'at avion thanks to being connected to their 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 they're striving to perceive the infinite light and they're always building vessels to go further and further, being bounced back, handling it properly, and then advancing. Because of that, they're then able to tap into the Da'at Avion, which changes to any taste, meaning anything they want to know about, they have access to. It's more than Wikipedia, more than Google search. It's in the, all the upper worlds. All the secrets of life and creation are opened up to them. Unbelievable. Shua Da'at Avion Shesh and this is drawn down through these firmaments, firmaments, the rakim, the boundaries between each of the seven heavens. That's what gives the tzaddikim the ability to taste this da'at elyon, which is basically awareness of the infinite light. How Hashem's light is shining everywhere, and there's just total clarity. Unbelievable. The tzaddikim can reach that level while, in a, while still in a physical existence. Like we said, the Rikiim, the firmaments serve as the purpose of being, the, the like those walls which are separated, the Prisa, those walls which are separating between us and the next level above us, which is the infinite light vis-a-vis -vis our level. And they, they're able, through that wall, it's such a benefit. The symptom, the constriction created by being bounced back is such a benefit of Nosen writes this elsewhere. You're gaining. When you're being bounced back, Take it as a gift for the biggest advancement that you're going to advance much more than if you just to go steady on a steady pace from level to level. You're going to gain much more by being bounced back and accepting it properly. You'll bypass thousands of levels that will take you thousands of years to go step by step. You now perceive it in one shot by being bounced back and accepting it properly. Phenomenal. What Rabbi Nachman teaches in this lesson 24. Okay? So to continue, שיש בו כל התאמים שמשך על ידי הרקיעים שהם בחינת פריסות המבדילים וכו'. ורנוסן reiterates, כי בכל עולם ובכל דרגה, because again, it's a rule, in every world, in any universe, and in any level that you're holding, יש בחינת רקיעים המבדילים. There exists a firmament, which is like the maximum at that level that you're holding, that separates you from the next level. You can't just walk in. There's like a door. Okay, follow this door and go in. <laughs> the door is locked, and you're, bound, you're trying to bang on the door, and the, the, the door <laughs> bangs into you, pushing you backwards. It's like a test. It's a major test. How you take that bounce back, that will determine your advancement to the next room, the next level, the next world, the next, the next darga. Okay? In every world, in every darga, there is a difference between the two and the two. All the perception of the dot is through these, specifically through these rekiim, specifically. So at this point, we can understand what Rabbi is saying here. How Rabbi Nossin explained the verse, right? We said that earlier. There's no God like God because he's unfathomable. Another God, you can try to figure him out. Any idol, you can try to figure him out. But the God of Yeshurun, there's nothing like him because you can't per can't perceive him, and yet Rochev Shamayim Bezrecha, even though he's above everything else, he who rides over the heavens, which is considered what is below the infinite light, the levels, all these levels that can work to reach to, to reach and perceive, he comes to your assistance to help you when you want to advance. And on top of that, Uvgavato, so the one who's above, way above you, and so far he comes to help little you, right? Uvgavato and Hashem's greatness. He brings himself down to Shechakim to allow his dot to be ground. Shechakim to be ground and then nourished to who? The people who deserve it, which are mainly the tzaddikim. Hashem allows his dot, which is the infinite light awareness, to be ground to the tzaddikim. That's the mana, which is being tochen, grounded, and being distributed to the tzaddikim. So the tzaddikim already in this world can taste already the Hashem's infinite light, and that's Hashem's greatness. That's Hashem's ga'ava. 
that as high as he is, he allows himself to be experienced in this world also, which goes against rationale. Because this world and infinite light are two opposites. Infinite light means there's no this world. The world is concealing Hashem's existence. And yet, you can still be in a physical world and perceive Hashem at the highest of levels. This is an unbelievable kindness. And that's hinted to in these last words of this verse, Uvegavato, Hashem's greatness. He allows himself that his da'at of the infinite light to be, this da'at elion, to be grounded and allow the tzaddikim to perceive everything when they have eyes of the infinite light shining into them, Bezot Hashem.